It sure has been a while since we've done a Bob's Burgers video. We haven't been back to this subject since Andy and Ollie. A lot has changed since then, hasn't it? There's one less person here on Media Mementos. I work in a totally different industry. And I moved out of my quiet mountain town into a bustling desert city, only to move back to that quiet little mountain town three months later. That was an adventure, but that's also a story for another day. <laughs> right now, we're here to talk about Louise Belcher. Oh god. One of the most popular characters in Bob's Burgers, and honestly, for good reason. What started off as a simple comedic relief character who was sort of the chaotic force behind the family, so to speak, became one of the most beloved characters in the entire show, but not just for her humor. In fact, these days, that's sort of taken a back seat. What is it that people love about Louise now? Well, that's what we're here to talk about, isn't it? Louise Belcher is the youngest member of the Belcher family, the third of three kids, daughter of Bob and Linda, and younger sister to Tina and Jean. In the early seasons of the show, Louise was basically a serial killer in the making. She loved voodoo, creating weapons, making fun of people, and coming up with these crazy schemes in order to get her either money or a good laugh. Mostly at someone's expense. Whenever somebody had a tough time making a decision, Louise would always be there to be that little devil on their shoulder. Now, of course, she didn't exactly mean any harm. She didn't mean any good, necessarily, but she wasn't trying to be evil. This is just Louise being Louise. Much like her mother, she doesn't really know the meaning of the word restraint. Her energetic and chaotic nature drives her whole life. But unlike Linda, she has a little bit more of a malicious side to it, which is strange because she's only nine years old. I wonder how she got this jaded. Anyways, the crew behind Bob's Burgers knew that even though Louise was a fun and funny character, she wouldn't be able to stay this way forever. Otherwise, the shtick would either get old, or she'd get flanderized, and we've seen way too many cases of that on TV, and we know the disastrous results. Which is why, in Season 1, they started planting these, what I call, story seeds in Louise's character. They wouldn't be anything big now, but over time, given enough attention, they'd end up bringing her from a comedic relief character to one of the driving forces of the show. There were three things in particular that helped change Louise. Those would be her relationship with her friends, her relationship with her family, and her self-image. Let's talk about her friends first. Louise isn't exactly the most social person at Wagstaff, but she still manages to have one or two friends. Okay, actually, specifically, she has three. Andy, Ollie, and regular-sized Rudy. Andy and Ollie kind of start off as Louise's henchmen, I guess you could say. Whenever she's got some kind of crazy scheme, she always calls on them to do the grunt work, and they love every minute of it. Rudy, on the other hand, can be considered Louise's one true friend. She talks to him about what she thinks, what her plans are, and really just treats him like a normal person. And coming from her in the early seasons, that's a high honor. But over time, things started to change. With regular-sized Rudy, she became a lot more open with him and started considering their friendship one of the most important things to her. Like when she realizes she went too far in insulting Rudy, she goes on this crazy quest to go track him down at his dad's place just to apologize. I mean, she did it under the guise of trying to get his blast bridge back to him. But still, that's her true intention. In fact, some might even say that she like likes Rudy, as she would say. The jury's still out on that one, and it's not confirmed nor denied. So make it that what you will. As for Andy and Ollie, well, first off, they just haven't been showing up in the show much at all lately. But as someone pointed out in the comments of the Andy and Ollie video, she doesn't need them that much anymore. Because Louise is growing as a character and is now more than just some kind of harebrained malicious schemer, does she really need to have her henchmen hanging around her all the time? Especially when she's got a friend like regular-sized Rudy? This just goes to show that when it comes to social settings, Louise's values have totally changed. People aren't a means to an end anymore. They can be legitimate friends that she hangs out with, 
learns from, and goes on crazy misadventures with. There's a similar story with her family, though it doesn't exactly play out the same. Louise has always cared about her family, but she's not really the best at showing it, especially because, generally speaking, she's not a very affectionate person. Unless, of course, you're putting her in front of a dog. Throughout the series, there's been a constant theme of Louise caring about the family more than she lets on. Particularly Linda, who she doesn't always get along with. Especially in the episode Mother Daughter Laser Razor. Yes, Louise prefers Bob, but she still loves her mom. Even if she can be a little, uh, much. As for Bob, like I just mentioned, he's the preferred parent. When she thinks that Bob and Linda are getting divorced, she wants to go with Bob. Her favorite nighttime activity is watching TV with Bob, making fun of whatever they see. And of course, whenever she has a problem, if she goes to anyone at all, she'd prefer to go to Bob. This is shown as early on as spaghetti, western, and meatballs in season one. While Bob and Jean are enjoying their father-son time, Louise gets jealous and tries to stop it. And it's not because she's malicious or is mad at Jean or something. As she says later in the episode, who else is she gonna hang out with? She doesn't have very many good friends at this point, and she can't really relate to Linda or Tina. Bob is kind of all she's got. As for Jean, their relationship's a little strange. We mostly see them as a comedic duo bouncing off each other, but every so often, we see that Louise genuinely does care about her large brother. As for Tina, Louise's relationship with her is kind of a mixture of the ones she has with Bob and with Linda. While she may not exactly understand where Tina comes from on a lot of things, especially when it comes to Jimmy Jr. or butts or zombies or friend fiction, Louise seems fully aware that, to be honest, they kind of need each other. With how reserved and awkward Tina is, she frequently relies on Louise to get her out of a bind. Louise's warped mind is the perfect way to get Tina out of her problem of the week. And on the flip side, Whenever Louise needs some advice, Tina is usually the one she goes to. Sure, Tina's a little... strange, but she always provides sound and non-confrontational, no-judgment advice. Louise may not focus on it very much, but Louise really does have a close relationship with her sister. So much so that she gets jealous of the Thunder Girls when she feels like they're taking up a lot of Tina's time. And you know something? These relationships have only grown more prominent and much stronger as the series goes on. But that begs the question, why exactly did this start to happen? Of course, yes, I talked about the in-real-life explanation, but what about in-universe? Is there some kind of explanation in Bob's Burgers itself that explains the changes that Louise went through? Yes, there is. That would be the third aspect of Louise's character, her self-image. Over the course of the show, Louise has gotten a lot more self-aware. This can be seen in the change of struggles that she seems to have throughout the course of the show. They go from her trying to get over a crush she has on a boy band member, or resisting Linda's overbearing push to forge a mother-daughter relationship, to her being worried if she's a bad friend to regular-sized Rudy, or feeling self-conscious about not being as mature as the other members of her class. The episode that I feel exemplifies this the best is The Spider House Rules, where Louise finds a spider in her room and adopts it as a pet. And what starts off as this crazy, wacky, hiding the pet story turns out to be something deeper when it's revealed that Louise kind of identifies with spiders. Because even though they seem nasty and fierce on the outside, they're actually fun and pleasant on the inside, but no one really gives them a shot. This is something that early series Louise would never think about. In fact, if you told her that that was an issue, she'd consider everyone else in the world at fault. Well, she's actually right. What changed here? To be honest, it's kind of a chicken and the egg situation, so you can go about it one of two ways. The first is that her experiences on the outside are changing her thoughts on the inside. With Louise being more social at school and connecting more with her family, she's developed a more caring personality over time. Of course, she never really wants to display that, always putting on a face that she's still the rough-and-tumble girl she always was. 
But this level of positive social interaction can really change a person, even someone as jaded as Louise. These experiences soften her up on the inside, causing her to be a little bit more self-conscious and taking a little bit more of a serious look on the rest of the world. All while still being herself, of course. But then there's the other argument where her inside has affected how she acts on the outside. This could all be a part of growing up. When you get older and you stop being a kid, you tend to focus less on yourself and more about other people around you and how they might feel, what they want, that sort of stuff. And who knows? Maybe this could be happening with Louise. Yeah, I know cartoon characters don't age, stop typing. I'm just saying in-universe, okay? And with her mind going through these new thoughts and developments, the way she goes through life is obviously going to be different. And maybe this is what caused her to get out there more, meet more people, get closer to her family, and, generally speaking, become a happier person. See, this is one of the many reasons why I love Bob's Burgers so much. With the exception of Teddy, who's gotten really flanderized lately, and Jimmy Pesto, who no longer shows up in the show at all. I mean, seriously, guys, just recast him. Is it that hard? The characters on the show haven't gotten repetitive and they haven't gotten stagnant. Instead, they've grown and changed as the years go by, showing that the writers are able to identify when a character needs to get shaken up. Whenever something new is added to the character, it not only pushes them forward and makes them more interesting, but it also fits perfectly in line with the character that we knew and loved. I mean, really? It's the best of both worlds, and honestly, I don't know of that many other shows that have been able to handle this as well as this show. And nowhere is this better seen than in Louise. What started off as, yes, a funny and memeable character, became one that you really want to root for, and keep a close eye on as she grows and changes and develops new friendships or family connections. One wonders where they're going to take Louise in the future. And considering that I vowed to not give up on the show unless A, it ends, or B, they jump the shark, you better believe that I'm going to be front and center to watch this whole thing go down. But not just for Louise. For all the other characters, too. In fact, we may or may not be talking about them someday. Hmm. Foreshadowing? Quick addendum here, folks. I recorded this back in, like, I don't know, October, November? In between the time I previously recorded the audio for this video and when it's actually coming out, there's been another episode called The Plight Before Christmas that basically confirms everything I just said. Louise values her family more than anything else. Especially their happy, bonding moments together, like on Christmas morning. Thank you, Bob's Burgers, for proving exactly what I've thought this whole time. Me and nobody else. Nobody else has ever had this idea whatsoever. <laughs> well, folks, thanks for watching the video. What'd you guys think? Who's your favorite character in Bob's Burgers? Also, what's your favorite episode? As I'm sure you can tell, Louise is my favorite character. And my favorite episode... Oh boy, I... It's tough to say, but I think Glued Where's My Bob. That one just, it does everything right, you know? And now it's time to thank our wonderful Patreon people. Our Masters of Fate, Manny Paredes, Kev, Leaf Storm, Ryan Williams, Chan Eleven, and Woody Woo. And our executive producers, Unkale, Blackjack, Edward Haas, H.R. Hoffman, Who Else But Zane, YouTube Milkwad, Albert Robinson, I am Fove, Aaron Vasquez, Ravioli Supremo, and Wes Franklin. If you too would like your name read at the end of every Media Mementos video, then consider donating to the Patreon, which has a link in the description below for you to check out. Alright folks, thanks for watching. See you guys next time, okay? Okay. <laughs>